Welcome to Revolutionary Gazette on just a beautiful day at Konica Jig Institute in, near Mercersburg, Pennsylvania. I'm Will and I'm joined today by Matt Wedd who is our host here and is the director here. As we talk about different ways to connect to the experience in the American Revolution, visiting a wonderful site is a great way to do it. Matt, thank you for hosting us today. A pleasure to meet you, Will. Cheers. Now, Konica Jig. Talk to me, what's the history here? Why come here? Okay, well, the Konakajig Institute in the early 90s was set up as a nonprofit to interpret, research, and further the study of the Appalachian frontier here. However, the Konakajig Institute is part of Rock Hill Farm, which has been lived in since the 1730s. It has been lived in continuously since that time. So why the Cornish Institute? We can represent the early settlers of Franklin County in the 1730s, the Welsh immigrants to this area. We can talk about the soldiers who are here as revolutionary war soldiers during revolution. We can talk about 19th century agriculture, 20th century agriculture, and of course today, modern interpretation. Wonderful, well, let's talk. There's so many things to go there, of course, our series, we're looking at the American Revolution, but talk to me about what you're doing as we run up to the 250th anniversary and how we connect with that here and who we find when we connect with it. Okay, well, I mean, our major focus this summer is on the mid 18th century. It's a general time. It's when the Davis family were here at Rock Hill Farm and it gives us a good starting point for other programs. Many of our farm owners here were Revolutionary War veterans. We know Robert Chambers, who acquires this land in the 1790s, fought during the Revolution. The Negleys, who acquired in the 19th century, fought during the Revolution. But we also have some famous ties to the Revolutionary War too. The Davis family, who live here in the 1750s. When John Davis dies, John Armstrong is present to sign his will. Of course, John Armstrong, famous PA officer, Revolutionary War hero. The Konica Jig Institute is also close to Mercersburg, which is famous for Hugh Mercer. As you may know, Hugh Mercer was a Scottish physician who fought on the losing side during the rising of the 45. He came to America to start a new life like many others did who were unsatisfied with British rule. And he was a traveling doctor. He was an apothecary. He was an officer during the French Indian War. And of course, he is famous for his role in the Revolutionary War, where he ends up taking bayonets for George Washington. All right, brilliant. Well, talk to me. We've got some famous faces and we've got some everyday people who lived here. Talk to me about what we see. If I come visit Kanakajig, what structures, what examples, what, what's here to see? Okay, so it's evolved here over the last 20 years since the Conjuring Institute has been a tourism site. We have our original structures, some of which date back to the 1750s. We have some relocated structures like the cabin behind me, and all those buildings try to tie together a central theme of what was life like for the average person, the average American over American history. Well, if I'm somebody who loves history, but I've got family members who aren't necessarily as enamored as I am, are there other things to see here? Absolutely. So the Konica Jig Institute comprises 30 acres. Most of that is natural resources, which, which we try to develop both for the local habitats and for visitors' enjoyment. We have numerous gardens, rose gardens, and native rock gardens, which support a wider range of pollinator plants. They host uh, butterflies. Yesterday I saw six monarchs and one hummingbird moth on one plant. We have a large wetlands area, which surrounds an artificial pond. And that wetlands area is an incredibly healthy ecosystem for bugs, frogs, turtles, birds, and then more. Uh, at the end of our site, we have a managed woodlot, which is an early succession forest, which is near our Old Welsh Cemetery. And there's a nice third mile walk through there, which makes a perfect shaded walk for the dogs during the summer. If you're here visiting with somebody who loves the nature, you've just told me about another historic part of the property that hasn't moved. Talk with me about the Old Welsh Cemetery. Yeah, that's one of the good things about the Institute here is we have a blend. Everything is both parts that everyone can enjoy. The Old Welsh Cemetery was actually not the Davis family who lived here in the 1750s. It was the adjacent Davis's Philip Davis, whose plots we border. He set aside one acre of his land in 1760 as a God's acre. And over the next 200 years, many people were buried there. Lots of local family names, the Angles, the Blairs. There's at least one Revolutionary War veteran there, at least one Civil War veteran. In the 1870s, another Civil War veteran who was still alive started a campaign to try and restore the cemetery. The cemetery today is smaller than it was. It's only one third of its original size. As the adjacent farm got plowed over, those graves, of course, got destroyed. And unfortunately, our oldest graves today only date to 
that's legible to about the 1820s. Though we know there are markers from the 18th century, in 18th century graves were often just rocks, and of course rocks don't tell the story. Great. Well, Matt, if I'm somebody looking to visit and I'm coming here, I know you're new here and you have some real plans. What do I look to see when I come to visit? Okay, well, first off, we are open. Grounds are open daily from dawn to dusk. We have Children's Frontier Explorer Pack. We have walking tours and interpret panels. So even if there's not something going on, it's a wonderful place to bring the family and just explore in your own comfort zone. We are trying to make this a hands-on interactive site that's good for families with young children, good for the older people who want that in-depth micro history. We have a lecture series here, and of course we have living history events like this that highlight a specific part of our story. Well, Matt, there's a lot to see out and around the grounds. As far as a museum here, what sort of collections? Okay, well, one of the nice things about this area is it's a microcosm of America, and America is a melting pot. We have a very large collection of Native American artifacts, and we have arrowheads, spear points, and gorgets that date back 10,000 years. In a more recent settlement, we've had Welsh here, we've had Scots and Irish, we've had English, German, and that really represents America it is today. It's a hodgepodge. In the 1750s, the Davis family owned slaves, and of course we've got the Afri Amer African American history here as well. So again, it's that whole that's represented. In the collection ourselves, one of our highlights is our medical collection, 18th century medicine and surgery tools. It's the donation of Dr. Lee Davis, and it's going to form one of the headline school programs that we offer. It combines science with history, with some entertainment and grossness too. And with the link to local community, Mercersburg, by saying, look, we have a Hugh Mercer medical program. It's something people want to come and see. It's my personal passion. I've been doing medical programs now for more than six years. And so, as well as the collection itself, I can bring it alive with my love of that story. Well, as we talk about connection, it's your passion, it's connecting science to education, to history, to nature. Really wish you best of luck and can't wait to come back and visit as the years go forward, as you have a chance to take things and twist things and keep them moving in a new direction here at Konikachik. Thank, Thank you, Matt, really for welcoming us here. Appreciate having you with us. Thank you for joining us at Revolutionary Gazette. Visiting a local site, whether you're on vacation or somewhere nearby your own place, what a wonderful way to get a connection to the experience so many people had during the American Revolutionary Era. We'll see you again soon.